Hey guys, what's up? Chris State here. I think, let me see, I think that's zoomed in a little bit too much. There, uh, maybe, oh, there we go. All right, so I want to talk today about what kind of equipment I use to make my development videos. I know I have around, I think, 30 or 40 development videos, but I get asked questions on like, how do I, how do I create them? What kind of software do I use? What kind of hardware do I use? And so this video is going to be about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you, um, or I'm going to talk to you about the software I use and then show you some of the hardware that I use. It's not very expensive. It's not, it's not super extreme and it's, uh, it's very affordable. So let's get into the first, uh, the first thing, which is going to be the software that I use now. Uh, when it comes to not only recording my screen, but editing the footage, I use one piece of software, and that's called ScreenFlow. Uh, ScreenFlow has been a, a great uh, recording software. I, it not only allows you to record not only from your, uh, your screen, uh, a separate microphone, you can actually record uh, your computer sounds. So if your computer, if you're playing music or ma making sounds, you can record those sounds. And you can record from an external or uh, internal camera on your, you know, if you're using like a MacBook or an external camera like I use. Now, I will let you guys know that this is only a Mac OS available option. There are other options if you want to record on Windows. When I record on Windows, I use something called Camtasia. That software is really, really nice, and it does come with an editor just like ScreenFlow, but it's a little bit different. Now, I don't, now Camtasia is also available on Mac. I've had ScreenFlow for forever because that's kind of the first thing I saw because I had a Mac and that's the first thing I bought because it was cheaper at the time. It still is cheaper, but I um, I haven't really changed and it's not because I'm not subject or, uh, you know, I don't like change. It's just I'm really familiar with that software and when I come out with videos, I want to make sure that I'm not have this huge learning curve and it stops me from creating content. So if you guys want to check that out, I will post some links to uh, Camtasia and ScreenFlow down below. I'm not like affiliated with them or I get any like kickbacks from them. I'm just kind of promoting them because that's what I use. And I think that they're good pieces of software and they work really well. Now back onto, uh, onto hardware, now onto hardware, I'm gonna be showing you guys what I use as far as hardware. The first thing here and the most important thing to me is going to be my computer. Now I use a, uh, I think it's a 2015 MacBook Pro and it's got um, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, a, uh, you know, um, I think it's a pretty beefy graphics card. I'll pull it up here real quick. It says here 16 gigs of RAM, it's an i7. You can use an i5, i7 doesn't really matter. And it's got the GeForce GT 750. You should be able to get by with the uh, built-in graphics card, the, the discrete graphics card. A lot of that stuff doesn't matter. What you really want is your RAM to be at least eight gigabytes. That's gonna that's gonna help you out when it comes to the editing portion, and especially uh, if you're only recording your screen. Now I I use I'm trying this new thing where I don't actually post videos with my face on them anymore. Not only is it kind of distracting, uh, but it, and it takes up a lot of storage space that really runs your graphics cards hot. And when you're recording with your microphone and your laptops there. The problem with this is your fan kicks on and then your microphone just picks up your fan the entire time. So if you stick with just recording your monitor, then the only thing you have to do is, uh, the only thing you'll need is that built-in discrete graphics card. The next most valuable and important piece of hardware is gonna be the microphone. It's important to have really, uh, really clear sound because especially when you're talking to uh, people that aren't necessarily in your like area Right, so if I, I, I'm posted in the US and I'm posting videos in the US, a lot of times people don't have a problem with my accent if I have an accent. You never really think you have an accent, you know, if you don't really have an accent, if you don't think you do, right? But uh, you want that audio to be super crispy and super clean and very clear. And so it's important to have a pretty good microphone. You don't have to go out and buy, you know, a soundboard and an XLR mic. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I use. This right here, I'm gonna flip, let's see if I can flip it around here. Uh, this right here is a, uh, it's a Marantz, M-A-R-A-N-T-Z Professional. I believe it's the 1001U series, and it's really nice. It's, uh, it plugs in through USB, so you don't need to buy an adapter, and it, it comes with this, uh, the, the deal I got, and I'll try to find it, but the deal I got comes with this, like, this mounting arm, and it comes with this, um, this shock, shock absorbent kind of apparatus, and then 
Uh, this did not come with it. This is kind of a, a pop filter or sound filter, but the mic itself sits right here and it just kind of slides out. You can see it pop, pops out, pops in, and you can pick this up on Amazon for about five bucks. And that goes over here to make sure that audio sounds great and clear, right? But you can see I can really navigate this around me. I can move it around, um, and it's really important to have that. So that way you don't, um, that way you're able to like, you know, the, the big problem when I first started this is I kind of had a mic sitting right here on my desk and uh, every time I might tap or hit the desk or type or something like that or click, the mic would pick that up. Now, I will go in to say, and I might mispronounce this, but it's important to remember that this is a car cardioid, cardioid mic, cardioid, I don't know. Essentially, it has a symbol on it that means that it's only recording from the front half of the mic. That's really important because when you're typing, it's going to keep that uh, those key clicks from being super loud. Now, it doesn't cut them all out. And if you guys can't hear them, it's probably just because I'm typing lightly or anything like that, but you will hear some of it in the background. So keep in mind that when you're making these videos, uh, you can buy, you can actually buy keyboards that make no noise. This one's really great. It's the Logitech uh, K K780. You can see it makes zero noise, it seems, unless you're really pounding on those keys. But these keys are nice and quiet. I use this for a while until I switch back to my MacBook keyboard. and. Uh, I was able to do that. Now, uh, the next really important thing for me is that I want to make sure that I'm recording in, um, and this is just for how I work, I record in 1920 by 1080. It's a, it's a 1080 image. Now, I know the MacBook screens are retina, and they actually are upscaled, and you can scale them and stuff, but I want to make sure that every time I record, it's super simple for me just to get in there, hit that record button, work on a screen, and then when I'm done, it's able to, to just upload and go to YouTube. And I actually use a secondary monitor that's mounted above my MacBook in order to do that. Now this is useful not only for the resolution, but it's very useful when it comes to uh, when it comes to actually having your notes on one screen and being able to record in the other. It, it really stinks when like you're trying to record and you have a lot of stuff to go over and you don't want to forget anything, because even to you it might not be a, a big feat, but even the smallest details can make a difference when it comes to teaching somebody something. And so. What I do here is I actually like to have my MacBook down below with my notes and kind of like my other stuff on there. And then up top is where I'm doing the recording and stuff like that. And that allows me to be up to date. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys kind of, um, I'm gonna break off the segment and show you guys kind of my setup as far as my black MacBook and my, um, my monitor and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera here. Oh. All right, so you guys can kind of see this. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this or not. But you can guys can kind of see how my setup is here. So I have my MacBook here. I've got it plugged into uh, a dongle with all the USBs and the monitor dongle. And then above it, you have this monitor here. Now when I do record the face cam for any reason, I do have this uh, Logitech C920 camera sitting above and mounted to that. And that allows me to get that crystal clear image. The, the MacBook face cam uh, or FaceTime, you know, basically camera, I don't really like it. It's not super good. It may be good for face FaceTiming, but it's not the best. And I typically don't like to always use that because uh, it, the angle it has, it's just kind of like a really low angle and it doesn't really pick up light that well. So I do have this, uh, It's I think it's like 60 bucks or maybe even 40 bucks on Amazon, and it can pick up some really good footage on there. Now, as far as that's, that's going to go into like my hardware and software, I don't have a ton of stuff that I use. It's not very complicated. What it really comes down to as far as creating these tutorial videos is kind of seeing uh, what people are looking for and then creating that. That's one of my biggest things is that, and it's most of the time it's what I'm working on. So if I work on something and I'm like, oh, I have no idea how to do that. And so I go out and learn that. I'll watch other people's tutorials. I'll read articles. I'll look at the documentation on the websites. I'll learn that. And then my first reaction is, once I kind of hone that and kind of am comfortable with that, as I want to share that with you guys. I'm getting into more of the React development and more of the building a website from the ground up and not using more of a static site generator. Not that those are awful, I love those, but you can actually use the uh, methodology and the building stuff that you learn in React to build a static site generator. Not the generator itself, but basically the themes and stuff like that. So I'm slowly building up and learning that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's really it, what I wanted to show you guys today. I wanted to show you real quick my setup, my desk, and uh, teach you guys that you don't need a ton of equipment uh, to, to build this kind of stuff. I don't believe I mentioned it, but the microphone here, it's not super expensive. I think I paid like $30, and it came in like a really nice 
uh, a really nice box that had like foam and stuff. So if I ever need to travel, I can just unmount it and bring it with me. And uh, it's really, really neat and organized. Uh, that's about it for this video. If you guys like this video and you guys want to see more of these kind of videos and show you guys kind of like my inner workings and how things work on here, just go ahead and uh, leave a like and a, a thumbs up on this video. Comment down below what else you guys want to learn, what else you guys want to see, maybe behind the scenes, and I'll show you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.